In this video, we're going to do some litmus testing. Litmus is an extract from a lichen. Lichens are those crusty little plant-like substances you'll sometimes see growing on the sides of trees or on rocks. Litmus can be either red or blue in color. The way we normally use litmus is to soak small strips of paper in the red or blue litmus and then we dip those bits of paper into different substances to test them. Let's see what happens when we do that. The first substance we'll test is Pepsi Cola. There's a sample of Pepsi. I've taken one strip of red litmus and one strip of blue litmus and dipped it into the Pepsi. If you look carefully, you can see the end of the red litmus that was dipped in the Pepsi is still red. But the end of the blue litmus that was dipped in the Pepsi has turned from blue to red. In other words, Pepsi is a substance that turns litmus red. Red litmus stays red, blue litmus turns red. Let's test another substance. This is a sample of baking soda that was mixed in with some water. Once again, I've dipped two strips of litmus paper in and you can see that the red litmus turned blue while the blue litmus was unaffected, it stayed blue. Baking soda is a substance which turns litmus blue. Test three, let's just use some pure distilled water. Here you can see that the red litmus stayed red, the blue litmus stayed blue. In other words, distilled water doesn't seem to have any effect on litmus paper. Another test orange juice. The red litmus remained red, wasn't affected. The blue litmus turned red. So orange juice is a substance that turns litmus red, just like the Pepsi did. One more. Vegetable oil. The red litmus that was dipped in the vegetable oil stayed red. The blue litmus stayed blue. Like the water, Vegetable oil doesn't seem to have any effect on litmus. We could continue testing a whole bunch of substances like this, and if we were in class, we would test a few more. Here's a typical sample of substances that we might test in class. And what would happen if we did? We would probably get results like this. Some of the substances turn the litmus blue, some of the substances turn the litmus red, and some have no effect on the litmus at all. Based on this, we can classify substances in terms of how they affect litmus into three different groups, and we can give those groups names. These are what we call operational definitions. We're defining these groups of substances based on something we can observe in practice. Substances that turn litmus red, we call them acids. Substances that turn litmus blue, we call them bases. And substances that have no effect on litmus, we call those neutral substances. So there you go, there's a first introduction to acids and bases. At this stage, if you had to describe what is an acid, you could simply say it is any substance that turns litmus red. Likewise, a base is any substance that turns litmus blue. And some substances are neither acid nor base. They're neutral, they don't affect litmus. In later lessons, we'll look more closely at acids and bases, their chemistry, and a little bit more about them. 